Hey gang, today I want to share with you a great music theory exercise which I really like doing. It's kind of a brain teaser for chords and it's something that you can do with a pen and paper which isn't that spectacular at all but when you spend like 80% of your time working on computers it can be nice to do stuff, you know, on paper. I don't know, that's maybe just me. Whatever. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you want weekly guitar content, music education content, music career advice content, music technology content, all of those things every Friday, 4pm GMT. Subscribe, hit the little bell icon as well so you know immediately when I go live with a video. Cool. So this exercise is something that I used to do a lot on the train back and forth to music college. It's fun if you like puzzles and chord theory, which I do. So yeah. So the first thing we want to do is write out the notes of our chosen scale and we're going with C major for what I hope are obvious reasons. So C, D, E, F, G, A and B. Fantastic. And now we're going to write out the character of these chords. So in the major scale it goes major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. So major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Fantastic. Now the exercise basically involves choosing a note. It can be any note but we're going to choose a note that exists within C major, again to keep it simple. You choose a note and you add it to each of these chords and you see what the name of that new chord is. So let's start with C, the root note, to keep it simple. So obviously there is a C within C major, otherwise it wouldn't be called C major. So that chord stays C major. Now what is C in relationship to D minor? Well it's a minor 7. I happen to know that off the top of my head but we can check that. We go root 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's a minor chord, therefore it's a minor 7. Well, that isn't always true, but it is in this case. Next chord, E. So we have some kind of E chord, and C in relation is root 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's actually a minor 6. Now, in my brain, we'd write that E minor 6, but that's not actually the case. We have to refer to that as a C minor flat 6. What is F? root 2, 3, 4, 5, so C is already in the chord F major. G, what kind of G do we have? G, 2, 3, 4, so that's going to give us a sus 4, or if you prefer you can go add 11, that's pretty much personal taste. A minor, A, 2, 3, so C is already in an A minor chord, Last one, what kind of B do we have? B2. Now, that's actually going to be a flat 2, so we could have a B diminished sus uh, flat 2, or it could be a diminished add flat 9. Again, down to personal taste. I can't promise that will sound any good. Now, the eagle eyed amongst you may have noticed a descending pattern. If we refer to this chord as 8, we go 8, 7, 6, 5th remember, 4, 3rd if you remember, 2. So we can actually use that to uh, make the whole process a lot easier. And let's do that for E. So E, uh, so what kind of C chord do we have when we add an E? Well, 1, 2, 3. E is actually the major third of C major, so that stays the same. So if this is 3, this is going to be some kind of 2. So we're actually going to get a D sus 2, or indeed add 9 if you prefer. So 3, 2, 1. Shockingly, E, the note, is already in E minor, the chord. 3, 2, 1, 7. This is going to be F major 7, G, it's going to be some kind of 6th, isn't it? I think that's a major 6th. A is going to be a 
three, two, one, seven, six, five. So actually A minor again already has a five, so that's just A minor. B is going to be a four. So we're going to have B diminished sus four or add 11 if you prefer. But what does this do? Well, it does a couple different things. It strengthens your understanding of how chords are related within a diatonic scale. And it's great if you're not sure how chords are made up beyond triads. It becomes harder if you start adding notes that don't exist within the scale diatonically. So that's where you get really spicy chords. So like if you tried adding C sharp to these chords, you get some really weird chords. So there you go, that was my fun chord theory brain teaser. It's really great if like you're half paying attention to a series on Netflix and you want something to do with your hands and your brain. Uh, especially if you want to play with really spicy sounding chords and it's a great way to justify using spicy sounding chords as well if like this one note runs through all the chords it's kind of a yeah fun way to justify that in terms of chord theory thanks again for watching like if you like the video subscribe if you haven't already leave any questions in the comment section below that's what it's for and I will see you next Friday at 4pm GMT. Toodaloo.